attention this morning to the Gospel of Mark chapter 2, the portion from verse 13 to the verse 17. We are told here, brothers and sisters, in verse 13, this words, that our Lord Jesus Christ went out again by the sea. Notice the word again, where you remember that our Lord was in Capernaum, and then he left Capernaum. But he returned to Capernaum, as we are told there in chapter 2 and verse 1. After some days, he came back to this town, to this city. But here we are told here in verse 13 that he left the city again. Our Lord Jesus Christ would be found traveling. And he traveled not because he was a tourist. He traveled because he tells us that that was the reason, the mission for which he came into this world. He came to preach the gospel in all the towns and in all the cities that he finds himself. And so he was not going to be confined to just one city that he loved, but that he would be found visiting cities after cities. Well, after he left the town of Capernaum, we are told there in verse 14, that he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office. Now this person by the name of Levi here, who was the son of a man called Alphaeus, he would be better known to us as Matthew. For that is what we are told there in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9, that it was Matthew who was known also with another name, Levi, and he was the son of Alphaeus. When you look at the list of the apostles of Jesus Christ, you will realize that there was another man who was also the son of a man called Alphaeus. We are told there in chapter 3 of Mark and verse 18 that the man was James, the son of Alphaeus. Now James is not related to Matthew, even though they had a father by the name of Alphaeus. Because Alphaeus was a very common Jewish name in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Matthew had a father named Alphaeus, so did James, who had also a father by the name of Alphaeus, but they were not related, they were not brothers in that sense. Look at what we are told there further down. From verse 15 downwards, we are told that this Matthew, this Levi, the son of Alphaeus, he organized a meal for our Lord Jesus Christ and his friends. We are told that in particular in verse 16. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw Christ eating with the tax collectors and sinners, you see that, that he organized a meal, whether it be a lunch or a dinner, he organized a, a time, a meeting for which we find Christ eating with his friends or colleagues, the ex-colleagues from the tax office, as well as others considered to be sinners by the scribes and Pharisees. It is therefore, as we read this portion of the Word of God, I hope that it brings to your mind this question. How should you see yourself as individuals, as well as brothers and sisters, how you should see others? For exactly that is the spotlight here. This is what our Lord wants us to consider in this portion. As we find Mark recorded the encounter here, he wanted us to have a right understanding of how we ought to see ourselves and at the very same time, how we ought to rightly see others at the same uh, understanding. So here, brothers and sisters, you find three questions. The first question is this, how do you see yourself as a person? How should you see yourself as a person? Look at how our Lord Jesus Christ record there as we are found in verse 16 to verse 17. We are told when, when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well, the word there, well, means healthy, have no need of a doctor or a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 
Now, brothers and sisters, it is very obvious when we read this record for us here that the scribes and the Pharisees, they did not see themselves as sinners. That was how they see and they look at Levi and his ex-colleagues from the tax office and other people who were there, unlike them, who did not belong to the scribes and the Pharisees. And the, the Bible tells us that the scribes and Pharisees look at those who were not like them as sinners, ex-collectors, as we are here told by the record of Mark. Our Lord, brothers and sisters, did not see them that way. They saw themselves as not sinners. They saw themselves, therefore, as righteous people. And the Lord said that they saw themselves as self-righteous. That's exactly how the Lord would see them and describe them properly. They were self-righteous people. Look with me now to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. In Luke 18, you find a record of how a Pharisee described himself and how the Pharisee saw others. In Luke 18, verse 9 to verse 14, we read, Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and they despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one man a Pharisee, and the other man a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you, that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like these tax collectors. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the other man, the tax collector, standing afar off, he would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other man. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Brothers and sisters, this is how it is recorded for us in Mark chapter 2. The scribes and the Pharisees, they do not see themselves as in need of forgiveness. They do not see themselves as sinners. They do not see themselves as people who needed a savior. They saw themselves as righteous, self-righteous in many ways. And when they look at others, they compare themselves with others and they see themselves as so much better than others. In fact, in great, in the eyes of God, he, they would be greatly promoted and honored by the Lord. Well, brothers and sisters, when we read this portion, as it is recorded here in Mark chapter 2, the question that must come to your mind is this. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself like the Pharisees and the scribes? Righteous and in good, no need of a savior? Or do you see yourself as the Lord would have you see here, the Lord teaching you here that He has come to call sinners to repentance. Where, into which group do you see yourself? Because you find Christ mentioning two groups of people. Turn back to Mark chapter 2. And once again, look carefully at verse 17. The Lord Jesus says, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In other words, brothers and sisters, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as, as the righteous? Or do you see yourself as the sinner? Do you see yourself as the healthy person? Or do you see yourself as a sick person in need of the physician of life? It is very important for you to know yourself before you look at others. To think about yourself in the presence of God. Because many people see themselves wrongly. They become arrogant. They see themselves as better than others. 
maybe they are millionaires, maybe they drive a better car, maybe they live in a very big house, a beautiful house, an expensive house, maybe, maybe, just maybe they did well in school and so now they are in a career admired by the common people in the society and so they think highly of themselves. But brothers and sisters, you are a Christian. How should you see yourself as a Christian? And the Lord Jesus is here teaching you to see yourself correctly if you are really a Christian. A Christian is somebody who follows the law. A Christian is somebody who accepts the teaching of our Lord. That we are sick, that we are unhealthy, that we are sinners in need of the saving of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is therefore, brothers and sisters, when you think about how you should look at yourself, it is very important for you to know how the Lord Jesus Christ sees you, isn't it? It is important to know how God is looking at you and how God sees you as a human being in this world. When we look at how the Lord saw the people, we look there in chapter 1 of Mark and verse 15, we are clearly told there that our Lord Jesus saw people as people who need to repent of their sins. In other words, as I have explained to you when we were considering that verse many Sundays ago, that the word repent means to have a change of mind in regards to sin. It means to have an abhorrence of sin, a strong dislike. Brothers and sisters, we were born, as David tells us in Psalm 51, in sin. And we grew up in the midst of sin. We become used to sin. In fact, for some of us until today, you enjoy sin. But if you are really a Christian, the Lord calls you to repent from sin, to have a, a new view about sin, to see the, the sin differently, as well as to come to an abhorrence of sin. Not only that, when you look there in chapter 1 and verse 17, you find that our Lord Jesus Christ described the work of His people as fishes of men. Why did He use this picture of a fisherman? Well, He is teaching us that He sees us as people in need to be saved. We are people in need of a Savior. We are in need of being saved from the sinful world that we live in, like the fish in the sea. And brothers and sisters, He has come to save us. He has come to give us the forgiveness of our sins. And brothers and sisters, do you see yourself in this light? Do you see yourself as the Lord wants you to see yourself truthfully, honestly, and correctly? That's very important. Do not read Mark chapter 2 and then just read there and just criticize the scribes and the Pharisees. It is not recorded there for you to despise them. Then you will be like them in the first place. You despise others. Rather, when you look at how the Pharisees and the scribes despise others, you ought to say, but I am a sinner too. I ought to be ashamed of myself. I ought to see myself as God would see me. And how I need the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come, he says, I have come to call sinners to repentance, that you will quickly do so to follow the Lord. The second question, the second question we need to ask ourselves in this portion of the Gospel of Mark chapter 2 is this, brothers and sisters, how do you see others? And that question brings us back to the same two verses in chapter 2, chapter 2 of Mark, verse 16 to verse 17. Let me read for you again. And think about how do you see others? And when the scribes and Pharisees, when they saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? How do you see others, brothers and sisters? Well, the scribes and the Pharisees, they saw others as tax collectors should, that should be despised and that should be hated by the other citizens of Israel, as well as sinners. Why were they sinners? Because they were not like the scribes and Pharisees, so righteous and so good as they saw themselves. 
You find you very immediately a word that is often used today in the world. The word is discrimination. You find the scribes and Pharisees discriminating against others. If you are not one of them, you are a sinner as far as they are concerned. And often we find people like that even among people who call themselves Christians. That if you are not a Chinese, E, you are so smelly, E, you are so dirty, E, you are so lazy, you are not a Chinese. You are a racist, brothers and sisters. You are no different from the scribes and Pharisees. You see others as different from you, and you think that you are superior to others. You are better off than others, in actual fact. And so the men in the world, the MCPs, will consider the woman to be inferior, and therefore you are a sexist. You have the populists who think that in your view is to be adopted. If not, you become angry with all those who disagree with you. You are a populist. You are a very self-righteous, self-important. And you think that you are smarter than others. And that you are the smartest person on earth. Others people must listen to you. Brothers and sisters, you are like the progressive liberals of today. It is true, brothers and sisters. The, the Pharisees and the scribes, they do have a point when they look at the Lord and saw our Lord mingling and you know, mixing with sinners and people who are not righteous in their eyes. It is true that the Bible does tell us to be careful of bad influences. If you will please turn with me to the book of Proverbs, there in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26, you find the Holy Bible saying this to us, giving us this careful instruction. It says, the righteous person should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. And so the instruction is clear, that if you are a Christian, you must choose your friends carefully, because choosing the wrong type of people especially, choosing wicked people to be your friends, you will somehow be influenced by them one day, to do evil, to, to despise the Lord and to adopt their sinful ways. The Bible, in fact, does teach us that we ought to separate from sinners. As we are told that, if you please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in the New Testament, and verse 14, a very famous verse in the old church that we came from, yep. it says that, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? If you go down to verse 17, it reads, Therefore come out from among them and be separate. And so you have people who call themselves the fundamentalists, the separatists, who would go around saying that Christian cannot mix with these type of people, Christian cannot mix with other type of people. They are the modern day scribes and Pharisees in their behavior and in their conduct. You see, brothers and sisters, you have wrongly understood the Word of God if it leads you to live your life differently from how the Lord is showing you here. If you find in what you understand the Bible to be uh, the same as the scribes and Pharisees, as we are told here, then, brothers and sisters, you are not a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Bible says we cannot be influenced by bad people. We must be careful of our friends and that we must be separated from people who are wicked and unbelievers. But it doesn't mean that you cannot reach out to them to win them. Because that's what the Lord Jesus is here recorded for us as doing. He was found among the scribes and the Pharisees as well as the tax collectors and the sinners. He was there to teach them what is right. He was not there to befriend them so that he will allow others to influence him. No, how are they going to learn that they were in sin and in need of repentance if nobody was willing to go and tell them? So it is very important, brothers and sisters, for you not to wrongly understand the Word of God as teaching you that you must be separated from the world, 
like the ancient people, hermits and monks and nuns who would climb high mountains and find a cave and separate themselves from society and meditate and read the Bible and pray and find themselves separated from everybody else. That is not Christianity. Those ancient people learn it from other pagan religions because Christianity talk about the Lord Jesus Christ mingling and going to do from city to city to be with people, not separated from them, but reaching out to them. The word is reaching out to others with the intention to share the gospel with them. Paul, help us to understand what we mean by separate from wicked, separate from a bad influence. If you would please turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, you'll find Paul giving us a very good explanation as to what we should do, rightly understand the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Reading from verse 9 to verse 13, we read these words. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. In other words, separate from sexually immoral people. Yet, he says, I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. Isn't that what I say, brothers and sisters? But now, I have written to you not to keep company with any one name a brother or who call himself a Christian and at the same time say you are Christian and yet who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortional an extortionist. Not even, Paul says, to eat with such a person who call himself such a Christian. For what have I to do with judging those who are non-Christians, those who are outside the church. Do you not judge those who are inside the church, those who call themselves Christian? But those who are outside the church, God, let God judge. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person, implying that a person was a Christian in the church. Put him out! So here, brothers and sisters, we find the Apostle Paul explaining what Christ was doing with his disciples in the company of tax collectors and sinners. Christ was not doing something wrong. He was not. Because all the commands to separate from bad influence, to separate from people who are wicked, to separate uh, from people who, were, who may be you straight, to separate from others by carefully choosing your friend. He meant, Paul tells us here, people who call themselves Christians. Now that is not to say we have no fear of the world. We must. We must make a distinction between those who love the Lord and those who do not. When we reach out to those who are not the lovers of God, we must be careful. But then, brothers and sisters, the way we treat them will be different from the way we treat those who call themselves Christians. That's what Paul is saying. And so it's very important for us to make this and to understand this distinction. The religious leaders saw others as tax collectors and sinners. And they saw themselves as righteous and on their way to heaven. And they will not lift the finger. They will not even help those who are sinners and tax collectors to come and know the Lord. They despise them, they criticize them. They have nothing to do with them. They, cons they make that, that these people they feel as if they were so unclean and second-class citizens, unworthy of heaven and so dirty that God would never cast a, 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 an eye on them. Brothers and sisters, they saw others as tax collectors and sinners and yet they have no feeling and no thought about helping them. They will not reach out to them. So different from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Our Lord came into this room. He went to all these people who had been despised by the righteous, who had been chased out by the religious leaders. A religious leader who is from a false religion in that sense because it does not promote as well as show 
the true Christianity, the true message of the gospel. But Christ did. He came. And so I ask you this morning, brothers and sisters, do you see yourself as in need of Christ? Be assured if you feel yourself lousy, you maybe recently made a big mistake and there is a big boo-boo in your life. You have mess up your life and you feel that God will not accept you you are a sinner be encouraged brothers and sisters there is always hope with our Lord Jesus Christ if you will repent if you will listen to him if you will come and follow him he shows you here he will dine with you he will listen to your woes he will listen to your confession he will embrace you and have you back but he will have no time for those who think they have no need of being saved. They will have no need of Jesus Christ. They have nothing to learn from our Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, learn it here. Now look at what we are told by Peter in chapter 1 of uh, chapter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 of this necessity to reach out to others with the gospel is saying but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and reverence and so this is the proper attitude as a Christian we do not despise sinners and tax collectors we are careful of those who call themselves Christians and misrepresent the Lord Jesus Christ by their behavior, their sinful ways. We have nothing to do with that. We do not even want to eat with these people. But we will eat with sinners because they need to hear. And those who hear will be saved. And it's very important for us to always be ready to have an answer to people who ask us a question. If someone were to come to you and say that this general election, how are you going to vote? Well, brothers and sisters, I hope you give an answer. And at the same time, make sure that your answer, the answer you give, will lead you to a door where you can open for the gospel to come into the conversation. Whatever answer you give, make sure you will bring the person to a point where you can share with the person the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Christ is come to call us to repent. That Christ is come to give us the forgiveness of our sins. If we will follow Him. That is how you ought to see others. You must see others with the same eyes that the Lord Jesus Christ is looking at others. Now we come to the third question, brothers and sisters. And that is this. How do you see the Lord Jesus Christ? How do you see the Lord Jesus Christ? You will realize, brothers and sisters, that the scribes and the Pharisees saw the Lord Jesus Christ differently from how the Christian see the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it obvious here? Yeah. Look at what you are told there in verse 15. Mark chapter 2 and verse 15. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, you find that it makes certain remarks about our Lord Jesus Christ. It reveals to us how they saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, do you see the Lord Jesus Christ with the same way? That the scribes and Pharisees saw our Lord Jesus Christ, a friend to be despised. Because look at our Lord, how can he, how can he, how can he be like that? Or do you see our Lord Jesus Christ and then you saw in him a man of compassion? How compassionate he is! What a loving Savior! What a man who had never give up on people! How the Lord Jesus Christ has come to embrace and to reach out to those who are in sin that they may quickly return to the Lord. You remember, brothers and sisters, that the common people hear Christ readily and happily because they saw in the Lord Jesus Christ somebody who was sincere, who, who taught them with authority, who taught them 
so unlike the scribes and the Pharisees. Here again you see that they readily had a meal with our Lord Jesus Christ. They would be willing to follow him anywhere because they knew and they felt the kindness of our Lord. And so let me ask you once again, what do you see in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you see in the Lord Jesus Christ hope? Do you see in him somebody who will never give you up? Somebody who is ever by your side? Somebody who will always be there for you, brothers and sisters? Do you see in the Lord Jesus Christ someone who cares for you? Someone who is really calm and who is a representative from God, the Son of God, who came into this world that you may know God and that you may be received by God in peace. It's important, brothers and sisters, for you to tell me, how do you see our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you see our Lord Jesus Christ with love, with reverence? Or do you see our Lord Jesus Christ in the same way that his enemies saw him, a person to be despised and to be rejected by them? You see, brothers and sisters, do you see the Lord Jesus Christ as being different from the scribes and the Pharisees? Look at it. Look at the difference in how Christ treated others. Look at how different he was from the scribes and Pharisees. He was genuine. He was concerned genuinely for those he saw. I must, I must, I must bring your attention back to the Gospel of Matthew. And look at with what eyes the Lord Jesus Christ saw others. In Matthew 9, verse 35 to verse 37, once again, let us consider how the Lord Jesus Christ saw others. In Matthew chapter 9, and verse 35, Then Jesus went out, went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the crowd, the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, for they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Brothers, sisters, do you see the Lord Jesus Christ as a man of compassion? Do you see the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord of mercy, who is full of praise and acceptance? Do you see what Jesus saw in others? Lord, weary, sick. Oh, brothers, sisters, children, do you see that in your parents, in your friends, in your colleagues, your classmates, those people you consider to be your closest friends, brothers, sisters, and children, have you ever told them about someone who loved them with such dedication and devotion? Unless you see with the same eyes as the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not learned from Him. You have not really followed Him. The call to Levi, the call to every Christian is this. Follow me, chapter 2 and verse 14. The question is, are you following me? Do you follow the law in the way you look at others? Or are you still stubborn in despising others and thinking that you are the only person who is accepted by God? Do you see yourself the way the Lord will see you? A sinner, no different from others, and all equally in great need of His love and His forgiveness. Do you, brothers and sisters, seek Christ, long for Him, and enjoy yourselves in knowing Him and be loved by Him? It's very important for you to think about such matter when we come to this portion of this word. You see, this portion is not about the call of Matthew. That is how a lot of commentators and a lot even your Bible may have uh, the headings there, the call of Matthew, the tax collector. But they're missing the point. The, the focus here, brothers and sisters, is how you should rightly see yourself and how you should rightly see others. You should not follow the scribes and Pharisees. You should follow Christ. Such a lovely person. How he saw and loved others how he saw and rescued others. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you this morning, 
Are you like the scribes and Pharisees who despise Jesus for eating with sinners and tax collectors? Or are you, brothers and sisters, those who loved him and admired him and say, Lord, thank you for giving us such a great example of love and compassion. We will follow you, for you call us to follow you. We will not follow your examples, and we will go and duplicate what you are doing, that many more others may come to love you, because in the way we have followed you. Let us pray.